I want you to take a moment and just stop every single thing that you're doing and just think to yourself, how are you feeling at this exact moment? If you're feeling like you can crush it, if you're feeling motivated, if you're feeling like your goals are not just goals, they are tasks that you accomplish on a daily basis, then great. This video is going to show you how to feel that way on a daily basis. And if you're not feeling that way right now, then I will show you how to start feeling that way. Every single one of you guys know if you are the founder of a business, if you are the owner of a business, that means it is all on you. That means that every single day, it's not on the people that work for you. It's not on the people that you work with. It's not on your clients to keep you in business. It's on you, which means that every single day, staying motivated is one of the single most important things that you as a business owner, as a founder, need to be able to do and maintain. This topic I've spent weeks researching and I've spent a long time trying to grasp how to actually live it and I've brought together a whole list of notes, a whole plethora of things that I'm going to give to you guys today to keep in your mind to get you motivated. There are three points that I'm going to go over with you. Point number one, find inspiring content to revisit. When you find something that you love, when you find something great, you get a feeling. It strikes a chord in your heart and this feeling, it, it lights up a fire under your feet to keep moving, to keep pressing onward. What I implore you to do is to find content like this that you can revisit. Revisit this content daily. Repetition gets it stuck in your brain. If you watch a video like this over and over and over again that gets you motivated, then you're gonna be motivated every single day and it's gonna be stuck in your brain when you're on that situation where it's tough for you, where it's hard, where you just have something that you need to do and you need to keep pushing forward and you're wondering how you're gonna do it, then you can pull out of the crevices of your brain, you can pull the content of this video out of your mind and say, this is how I need to deal with this situation. There are books out there that I've read that what they say is to read this book more than one time to get it stuck in your brain. And what I am telling you right now is sometimes it's great to read something one time, don't get me wrong, but sometimes you need to read it more than one time. You need to read it tens of times, hundreds of times. You need to get it stuck in your brain because repetition will rewire the way that you think and start to get you motivated. And don't let it just stop with a feeling. You need to have it be something that you actually live on a daily basis. You don't want to just have it just get stopped right there with the feeling that you that you felt on the single day. You want to take notes, you want to write it down, you want to say this is how I'm going to start living my life because if you feel it, if it, if it feels good to you, you can learn it. You can learn something if it gets you feeling empowered because you learn better when you feel an emotion with it. Your mind connects things with emotions. That means that if something makes you feel good, your mind is going to connect that feeling with that way that it is taught. If living in the now doesn't get you feeling empowered, then maybe you need to try something else, something that feels better to who you are as a person. You don't need to fully change who you are. There are aspects of who you are that need to constantly be maintained for you to feel motivated. Otherwise, you're just gonna feel like you're being out of character. So find the things that motivate you based on you, not the things that motivate you based on what other people say should motivate you. My style of teaching, it may not be the thing that motivates you and that's fine, but you want to find somebody who has that style of teaching that is going to really struck that chord and tug on your heart and get you going and light that fire. Point number two, you need to change your mental chatter. I'm sure you've heard this before a million times, but if you think it, you manifest it because that is how your brain is wired. If you're thinking negative thoughts, then you're gonna manifest negative things around you, whether you know it or not. And sometimes I think that this actually goes beyond physical and goes to metaphysical just because of the hippie in me, what can I say? But I think that there is more to this than just manifestation due to the way that you think is the way that you perceive reality. Sometimes I want to say that reality will actually shift itself based on the way that you think. So if you're thinking positive thoughts, then reality will start to shift itself to positive thoughts, to positive things. Rather this is because 
you're actually manifesting it or if it's because you're perceiving it different is an argument for another time, but I believe that you are actually legitimately manifesting something, that something out there is creating something better for you. And by doing this, you can begin to build your luck. You can create your luck, as I've told you before, you can create your luck by doing positive things, by thinking positive thoughts, by just being positive and hustling. You will start to create good luck for yourself. So empower yourself by saying you can. Notice these topics that I'm giving you are not saying stop saying you can't. It's saying empower yourself by saying you can. Think positive, dream bigger, and plan bigger. Achieve your dreams because you know you can. Achieve your dreams because you're thinking positive. Achieve everything that you're planning to do because that's all you can do. That's all you can think about. All you can think about is achieving it because you know you can. It is something that literally is a fire burning inside of you to achieve it because you can't think of any other possible outcome. You have to achieve it because you're telling yourself you can so many times that you're going to do it. Mantras are powerful, powerful things. Telling yourself you can over and over and over again is a mantra. Having a positive mantra rather than saying I can't do this, saying I can do this is having a positive mantra. And by creating these mantras, you are creating power. Words are powerful things. You can command anything with a word. You need to start seeing a word as a powerful thing, not just a thought that goes inside of your mind. Every single thought that goes in your mind is creating your day-to-day -day life, your month-to-month -month life, your year-to-year -year life. Every single thought that goes through your mind is creating who you are. So saying that there is no power to words, saying that they're just words is a fallacy. They're not just words. Words are power. They've said this many times. That's what Shakespeare said. Words are power. And that's why Shakespeare is one of the greatest wordsmiths that ever existed. And remember, you can be your own wordsmith. You can create the mantras that resonate with you by looking at other mantras, taking from the other mantras, and crafting your own mantras, and building that powerful thing that you repeat to yourself daily because repetition is key. And when you're building this repetition, you're building this feeling, and when you're building this feeling from these words that you've built, you are creating a better life for yourself. Point number three, write things down and check things off. There's a strong feeling associated with the actual physical act of checking something off. You can keep things in your mind and check things off in your mind all you want by knowing that this is my goal, this is what I want to accomplish, and you're checking it off as you do it mentally, but when you actually physically check it off, there's a sort of empowering sensation there. It makes you feel like you actually achieved something because what you're doing is you're taking what is the non-physical and you're actually giving it something physical and you're checking it off. This is how I quit smoking. I used to be a smoker for five years and what I did was I kept a daily, a daily journal and I set days down for the daily journal. I wrote down each day before I started day one, two, three, four, five, up to 30 and then day 60 and then day 90 and I checked each day off as I went and I put down how I felt each day I did a sort of mock journalism that really gave me this empowering feeling like I was actually accomplishing something. I wasn't just grinding daily, I wasn't just making myself out to be the bad guy every single day mentally because I wasn't doing what I wanted to be doing. I was checking things off so I had the positive sensation associated with it as well. I had the feeling of getting it done associated with it and that's exactly what checking things off does. Goal tracking gives your dreams a presence. Like I said, it gives your dreams a sort of physical sensation to them more than just the physical sensation around you. And this is because what it does is it actually manifests it down on the piece of paper. Mentally, somehow our minds are organized to where if we write something down, it is real. If we write something down, it's there and we need to get it done and it starts to actually linger on us and we don't want to not check it off. We want to check every single thing off that is on the paper. And so what this really does is it prevents tunnel vision. As I always say, you want to have a 360 vision with your business. You want to be able to see everything in front of you and everything behind you at the same time. And by checking things off, what you do is you sort of distance yourself away from the fact that you have this list of all these different tasks running around your head that you need to get done. 
and you put it on paper so that you don't have to think about them all of the time, you can just refer back to that paper, check them off when they're done, and then you can spend your time actually stressing about the things that need to be stressed out, like how you're going to get task A done, and how you're going to get task B done, and how you're going to get task 1 that correlates with task B done. You're going to be thinking about this rather than actually thinking about the stress of having all of these tasks all in one place, because that is not what is going to happen. You're going to have all this written on a piece of paper, and you're not going to stress about the piece of paper, you're going to stress about each individual task. And another thing that this does is it prevents hustle fog. That's what I call it when you're in the grind and you're not thinking about anything else other than grinding. You're just sort of head down on the swivel, you're going at it, you're not paying attention to anything around you, you're just going at it, making sure that you get it done. Kind of the same thing that correlates with tunnel vision, but it's a little bit different because what this is, is this is directly created by just hustling, and you're not really paying attention, not making sure that you're thinking of all these extra things that you could be doing because you, all you're thinking about is making sure that you are actually keeping track of the tasks that need to be done, and you have this sort of nagging voice in the back of your head saying, hey, what about that one task that I didn't get done? Do I know that I actually got that task done? Did I send that email that I wanted to send? Maybe I should go back and check my sent box and make sure that I sent the email. When in reality, all you had to do was write it down on paper. So when you check it off, it gets rid of that grind fog. And what that getting rid of that actually does is it will put you back in the state of motivation because you don't have to spend all this energy stressing out and wondering about certain tasks that you thought you needed to do because you're spending all of your energy focusing on the task rather than stressing about them. So you have an extra sort of cache of energy that you can put into actually being motivated and thinking about other things that you need to be doing. And I really want to stand on the pedestal for a second here. When you write things down, it gives it more of a presence than typing things out. I believe the pen is mightier than the typewriter. Cheesy, cheesy, cheesy. I know it's cheesy, but I believe it to be true. I think when you write something out and you actually put that physical energy into writing something out rather than just typing it out, you get that physical sensation of I created something and now I want to make sure that that which I created has an end to it. And that's what you're doing by writing it out. It's like drawing. You can't just start a drawing and not finish it. Well, you can, but it doesn't feel the same. When you write a task out, you have to finish the task. And as soon as you check it off, you get that sensation. And that's why I say, write things down. Don't type them out. So that's all I got for you guys today. Thank you for watching. If you have any comments, please leave them down below. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know if this video is going to motivate you or not. I want to hear about it. Like the video. Hit the subscribe button every Monday, every Tuesday. Bye.